Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Chand Balabha Giri Vardhari Gopi Chand Balabha Giri Vardhari Yasoda Nandana Braja Janna Ranjana Yasoda Nandana Braja Janna Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vannachari Jamuna Tira Vannachari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janna Balabha Giri Vardhari Gopi Janna Balabha Giri Vardhari Gopi 
Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Bihari Gopi Janna Balava Giribaradhari Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jai Radha Madhava Bihari Gopi Janna Balava Giri Baradhari Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Yashodanandana Brajajana Ranjana Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jari Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare.
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Ha 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare Jaya Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Prabhu Pada Shila Prabhu Pada Jaya Gora Nitai Gora Nitai Gora Nitai Jaya Gora Nitai Jaya Jagannath Jaya Jagannath Jai Baladev Jai Subhadra Jai Jagannatha Jagannatha Baladev Jai Subhadra Jai Radha Balava Radha Balava Shri Radhe Jaya Radha Balava Radha Balava Shri Radhe Nithai Gaur Hari Bhol Hari Bhol Hari Bhol Nithai Gaur Hari Bhol Nithai Gaur Hari Bhol Hari Bhol Hari Bhol Nithai Gaur Hari Bhol Jai Om Vishnu Pad Maramahansa Parvajakacharya Osotera Shata Sri Sri Mad, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai, Ananta Koti Vaishnavrinda Ki Jai, Namacharya Shri Haridas Thakur Ki Jai, Prem Shikaho Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shri Vas Adi Gaur Bhaktivrinda Ki Jai, Shri Shri Radha Krishna Go Gopinath, Shamakund Radhakund Giri Govadan Ki Jai Shri Vrindavan Dham Ki Jai Shri Navadvip Dham Ki Jai Shri Jagannath Puri Dham Ki Jai Bhakti Devi Ki Jai Tosi Devi Ki Jai Ganga Devi Ki Jai Jamona Devi Ki Jai All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees All glories to the assembled devotees all glories to Sri Guru and Sri Goranga Hari Krishna Jai Hari Hari Bo Namah Vishnu Padaya.
Krishna Prasthaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamani Namaste Sarasmati Deve Gauravani Pacharani Nirvasesha Sanyavadi Paskacha Dizitarani So, Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Yeah. So nice to see so many smiling faces and devotees here to this morning. Uh, so, I chose this verse myself. I, I begged to be excused from following the sequence um, due to time constraints because I could uh, present something with greater uh, opportunity from if I chose the verse to be relevant to the subject. So please excuse me, we're uh, not exactly following the standard, but it is the Srimad Bhagavatam and that's the main thing. So this is, as we can see from the board, Canto 1, Chapter 1, Verse 14. So this is at the very, very, very beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Uh, I believe you're on Canto 7. So you're more than halfway through and it's amazing that I don't know if anyone here has kept record how many times since the opening of this temple here, what to speak of in Burnett Street, how many times you've been through the whole Bhagavatam. That would be very interesting to hear because that would give you some, some uh, understanding of the magnificence and the significance of this temple for everybody, for everyone and their children and their grandchildren to come. So this verse that I chose is about fear. And we'll speak a little more about fear afterwards. So let us begin. Apana Samspritim Goram Yanama Vishvaso Grinan Tata Sadio Vimucheta Yad Bibeti Swayam Bayam Apana sam smitir goram Yanama vishvaso grinam Tata sadio vimucheta Yad bibeti swayam bayam Apana samsmitir goram Yanama vishvaso grinan Tata sadyo vimucheta Yad viveti swayam bayam Panam simsitim godam Yanama vivasham dinam Tatitya mucheta Tandibeti vayam vayam Apana samsmitim godam Yanama vivasho grinam Tata sadyo vimucheta Yad vibeti swayam bayam Apana samsmitim godam Yanama vivasho grinam Tata sadyo vimucheta Yad vibeti swayam bayam 
Apanasam smitim godam. Yanama viva shogrinam. Tatasadyo vimucheta. Yadvibeti swayam vinam. Apanasam smitim godam. Yanama viva shogrinam. Tatasadyo vimucheta. Yadvibeti swayam vayam. Young girls and ladies. Apanam sam smitim goram. Yannam abhidha shobhinam. Tathasad yovi mucheta. Yadjibeti swayam vayam. Apanasam smite goram. Yannam abhidha shobhinam. Tathasadyo vimucheta Yandibeti swayam vayam Apanasam smitim goram Yannam abhidha shogrinam Tathasadyo vimucheta Tadviveti swayam bayam Apanasam smitim goram Yannama viva shogrinam Tathasadyo vimucheta Yandviveti swayam bayam Apana? Apana Being entangled Samsmitim, in the hurdle of birth and death. Goram, too complicated. Yat, what? Nama, the absolute name. Vivasha, unconsciously. Grinan, chanting. Tata, from that, Sadhya, at once, Vimucheta, gains freedom, Yat, that which, Bibeti, fears, Svayam, personally, Bhayam, fear itself. Living beings who are entangled in the complicated meshes of birth and death can be freed immediately, even by unconsciously chanting the holy name of Krishna, which is feared by fear personified. Please repeat. Living beings who are entangled in the complicated meshes of birth and death can be freed immediately, even by unconsciously chanting the holy name of Krishna, which is feared by fear personified. Purport. Vasudev, or Lord Krishna, the absolute personality of Godhead, is the supreme controller of everything. I'll read that again. This is a very important sentence. Vasudev, or Lord Krishna, the absolute personality of Godhead, is the supreme controller of everything. There is no one in creation who is not afraid of the rage 
of the Almighty. Great Asuras like Ravana, Hiranyakashipu, Kamsa and others, who were very powerful living entities, were all killed by the personality of Godhead. And the almighty Vasudev has empowered his name with the powers of his personal self. Everything is related to him. And everything has its identity in him. I'll read that again. Everything is related to him. Hare Krishna Sangana. And everything has its identity in him. It is stated herein that the name of Krishna is feared, even by fear personified. This indicates that the name of Krishna is non-different from Krishna. And therefore the name of Krishna is as powerful as Lord Krishna himself. There is no difference at all. There is no difference at all. Anyone therefore can take advantage of the holy names of Lord Sri Krishna even in the midst of greatest dangers. The transcendental name of Krishna, even though uttered unconsciously or by force of circumstances, can help one obtain freedom from the hurdle of birth and death. Omagyana timrahandasya gana gana salakaya chakshu unmilitam jaina stasmai shri guruve namaha. So this verse, um, I was actually, interestingly enough, I was reading this verse from uh, Folio last night to prepare. And the translation that it gave me was different. Now, it wasn't different in the sense that the, the uh, words were different, the meaning wasn't different, but the grammar was different. Mm -hmm. For example, I will read you an example of that. Transcendental name of Krishna even is uttered in unconscious state of mind and forced by circumstances can help the reciter in getting freedom from the hurdle of birth and death. Now you might not notice in that sentence, but the grammar is different. It's not quite right. It's not quite English grammar. The reason being that this, somehow or other, the translation that I was given when I was preparing was from the original Bhagavatam that Srila Prabhupada prepared when he was living in Vrindavan. And so when I read it, the flavor of the faulty English and the, the not quite right words leaving out certain pronouns and certain verbs and so forth weren't quite correct. Um, it reminded me of Srila Prabhupada and Srila Prabhupada at that time. Now, none of you, I think maybe, I don't think there's anyone here who actually saw or Sangam, of course, Sanganam, but nobody else actually saw Srila Prabhupada perhaps who's here. Ah, oh, Rasa, of course. Not in Vrindavan. Not in Vrindavan, but here. And if they saw Srila Prabhupada here, they would have seen him seated like here, exactly like you can see the murti of Srila Prabhupada. And when I walked in this morning, I remember I was sitting there, and Srila Prabhupada was sitting there, and his head was so high that it was scary. Right, Sangam? His head was up like this. <laughs> and my head was down like this. <laughs> Because he was going to, his words were going to examine you. They were going to examine you. And you knew that he was like, he could see exactly where you were situated. 
He could see exactly where your mind was wandering and where you were holding on to certain things you didn't want to tell about or something that you really didn't like about somebody else in the room. He could see all of that just in the same way that a qualified kindergarten teacher, when the little children come in, uh, they can't hide anything. The teacher looks and sees everything. And the teacher, of course, is benevolent. But the student, especially if you're holding on to something, you stole somebody's pencil and it's in your pocket. <laughs> the, the student is scared of the teacher because the teacher will make me give it back. It will make me give it back. And we don't want to give back. We want to hold on to what we have in our pocket. Don't look in my pocket. <laughs> don't look in my pocket. Just believe me. I'll speak here and don't look there. But Srila Prabhupada would look at you and you knew, without a doubt, he saw everything. So that was disconcerting. And I remember Srila Prabhupada sitting right here, Looking just like this, there was no shine because of the, the uh, medium that the murti is created from. Uh, our skin doesn't shine quite as much as that. But he was sitting there like that, looking very, very strong. And he was speaking about uh, getting free from family life. Now, my father was seated on one of those fold-up chairs right beside me there. And my father was inclined towards Krishna consciousness mildly. And my mother was going in the opposite direction, <laughs> firmly disinclined. And uh, so Srila Prabhupada is speaking and he said that you can use your whole life to satisfy your family, working hard to satisfy them. And then at the fag end of your life, you say, now I want to use my time exclusively for chanting. And the family members say, no, you have to serve me. And Prabhupada turned his gaze right in the direction of my father. And my father was a little bit, <laughs> I didn't know what to do. I mean, I knew he could do that, but my father wasn't expecting it. And so he lowered his eyes and he kind of nodded a little bit and, and Prabhupada's gaze went forward again and he kept speaking. But he had this majesty, this majesty that um, it, was, it was nothing chemical. You wouldn't have been able to analyze it in your school studies or in your science lectures or your psychology lessons. You wouldn't be able to come anywhere near it. There'd be a glass wall between you and what he was carrying. Because he was carrying the truth. And sad to say, modern education is not at all interested in truth. Modern ed education is interested in utilization. So you educate the people so that they can fit into the unit that you're trying to create. And the more successful they are at that, the more well-educated they are. And Srila Prabhupada had, had no interest in that. And it was incredible because he would walk down near the, the uh, shrine in the morning, his head held high like that, dignified with his saffron cloth and chadar. And the people were zipping by in their cars, off to work, off to work, off to work. And Srila Prabhupada is just calmly walking in the park. And it's said that one, Korma Prabhu said at one time he saw, somebody mentioned they saw tears in Srila Prabhupada's eyes. Because he was feeling sorry for these people who were running to work, running back from work, running to work, that this was their life. And I remember when I heard that, I thought, well, that is their life, isn't it? But to Srila Prabhupada, this was a tremendous loss, a waste of life. So here we are, we can talk about Srila Prabhupada and it's wonderful to do so and we must do so. 
And we must hand, put the golden standard of Śrīla Prabhupāda's uh, complete faith, complete clarity of mind, complete surrender to Krishna, alignment complete. We must put ourselves and compare ourselves with that. Otherwise what will happen is we will make our own tangential experience of Krishna Consciousness and we may be going mildly or radically in a different direction. So that's a bit scary, isn't it? <laughs> and there's something to be frightened of. What if I'm radically or, or, or t tangentially going in a different direction? So I'm trying to make you frightened and I hope that that was a little effort in that direction. So what do we do? What do we do? In fact, it's very important. This is ironic in a world that everyone's being told that they should just relax and, and do some yoga and feel good about themselves and enjoy life. What do we do when there's fear? And first of all, can you tell me some of the causes of fear in your lives? Yes. Fear of death. Fear of death. Any more? Fear of losing. Fear of losing. Yes. Ah, there's a good one. Fear of devoting my life to something that is wrong. Fear of death. Fear of losing. Give me some more. Insecurity. What do you mean by insecurity? That's fear of fear of being able to control your circumstances. Ooh, more. Fear of a pointless existence. Fear of a pointless existence. Now these are powerful ones. Yes. Losing money and. Business, yes, now we're getting very practical. All these deep <laughs> esoteric fears, and now we're getting down to the nitty gritty. Yes, fear of losing money and business. What else? Fear of love Fear of loved ones. Lose the fear of losing loved ones. Yes, you can, you're allowed to have spiritual fears. <laughs> Let's have some more. Yes. Did you put your hand up or just rub your face? <laughs> Ooh, fear of failed relationships. Fear of? Yes, fear of disease. How about during COVID? You must have all been peaceful and happy here. <laughs> Whew. So these are big things. These are not like, uh, you know, little things that you talk away. You, you, you've brought out to the, brought to the surface some key fears. We can have like lots and lots of fears that are just day by day fears. You know, fear that I'll be late for my appointment, fear that I won't pass my exam, um, fear that somebody doesn't like me if I said that, fear that I made a mistake, on and on and on. So you actually see from this deep level of fear right through to the superficial or the other way around from the superficial right to the deep, you can see how much fear there is. So Srila Prabhupada is drawing attention to this. He's drawing attention to this and he says, for example, there is a struggle going on in material life. Material life means we are full of fearfulness. And everybody just take a moment and notice how just under the surface of your buoyancy, you know, it's a good day, I passed my exams, my friends like me, I'm having, I bought something wonderful, da, 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 da. just under the surface, the fear is there. The fear is there. So Prabhupada is saying that material life means we are full of fearfulness. Everyone wants to exist and he has to fight. At least we have to fight with the winter season. 
Uh, we all in Melbourne know about this. No. At least we have to fight with the winter season. If there is no fighting, at least there must be fighting with the winter season or the summer season. Without fighting, you cannot stay. So what about the children? They don't fight, do they? They also fight. They also fight. Without fighting, you cannot stay. This is called a struggle for existence and survival of the fittest. You must be fit. This is called the material world. You must be fit. If you're not fit, you'll end up sleeping on the street. And even when you sleep on the street, you'll have to fight with a dog who wants to sleep where you are. Or you'll have to fight with a policeman who wants to get you moved along. And you'll have to fight with somebody to get some money to eat your next meal. So you go to the top, big, big, big businessmen all over the world. You go to the bottom, you'll find that everybody has to fight. And the spiritual world means there is no fight. Simply friendship, that's all. This is the spiritual world, Vaikuntha. Kunta means anxiety, and Vaikuntha means where there is no anxiety. So Srila Prabhupada translates the word fear into the word anxiety. Because some people say, I'm not afraid of anything, but I do get anxious now and then. So here we'll hear a little bit more about the fear element and then we want to go back and hear what is the solution. So Prabhupada also says, and as devotees we're attempting to do this, but we should never think that we're actually competent because as soon as you think you're competent, you're slipping. You've slipped into a mud puddle. Because in truth and reality, none of us are competent and none of us are actually fully capable of doing what Srila Prabhupada is instructing. So he says, only a person who is advanced in Krishna consciousness, he can become fearless. Without self-realization, philosophy is dry speculation or a waste of time and energy. Girls, please sit quietly. Okay? Good. So whatever you need to work out, work out, and then sit quietly. Okay? All right. All right. If you had something to work out, work that out. Okay? Srimad Bhagavatam gives the right knowledge of one's own self. And by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, one can, one can, this is what we're hoping for, or this is what we should, which should be alive in us in the morning. By hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, one can get free from material attachment and enter into the kingdom of fearlessness. By hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, we can enter into the kingdom of fearlessness. This material world is filled with fearfulness. Like fear, always felt by prisoners within a prison house. So this is a very good example. That prisoners are living in the prison house. Um, they're given a room. It's not a very nice room. It's a very small room. And it's locked. They can't just come out the door and go for a walk. They can't go for a walk in the sunshine because they feel like it's a nice day outside. They maybe even don't have a window out to the light of the day. And when they come out of their cell, in order to come out of their cell, they put their hands behind their back through a little hole. And the prison warden clasps in handcuffs their hands together. 
and then they pull their hands in through the little hole in the door and they, he opens the door. He will not let them come out unless they're handcuffed. And then when they come out, he walks with them to the next place and drops them off there. It's, it's, it's a life. You get fed, you get your eating, you get your sleeping, you don't get any mating and you don't get to defend in the way that you did that caused you to be there. But you get your eating and sleeping, it's taken care of. So this world is considered like a prison house. And the handcuffs are our understanding of reality, what we think reality is, who we think we are, who we think we want to achieve, what in this world will make us motivated to stay here. This is how Maya works. You don't need those metal handcuffs. You just wave a carrot <laughs> in front of the living being and say, you can have a nice family here, a nice house, everything will be nice, stay here. And they say, yes, I'm going to stay here. And I'm going to dig in and I'm going to invest in my life here in this world. Don't we all feel that? Don't you feel a little confronted? <laughs> When Srila Prabhupada would speak like this, I would be so confronted. Like, what's he asking me to do? Is he asking me to be like a non-human being or something? Is he looking in my pocket and seeing all the things that I want in life and he's telling me to take them out and give them back? Is he asking me to be, heaven forbid, a pure devotee? Me? Doesn't he understand who he's talking to? How could he ask me that? He might ask them that, but not me. I've got a life. And he's looking and he's relentlessly looking. He's not wavering. He's not saying, oh, you poor thing. Off you go. He's saying, no. No. This is what the Srimad Bhagavatam is meant to do. It's meant to make you fearless. Similarly, we in this material existence are always fearful. And this fearfulness is called anxiety. And everyone in material life, in all species, in all varieties of life, is full of anxieties. Either by breaking or without breaking the laws of nature. Liberation or mukti means getting relief from these constant anxieties. And this is possible. Now he's going to give us an interesting uh, formula here. He says, this is possible only when the quality of anxiety, he's not telling you he's going to get rid of your anxiety, <laughs> Oh dear, he's going to tell you to change the quality of your anxiety. This is possible only when the quality of anxiety is changed by the devotional service of the Lord. Srimad Bhagavatam gives us the chance to change the quality of anxiety from matter to spirit. This is done by association of a learned philosopher like Sukadev Goswami, the son of Vyasadeva. So when your anxiety turns from being, oh, I didn't pass my exams, or oh, I, you know, I had a fight with somebody, or something like that, to how am I going to ever become Krishna conscious? It's too hard. How am I going to become Krishna conscious? That's a moment of transferal, still anxiety. But the content has come from something of this world, trivial or otherwise, to something that is saying, how am I ever going to get there? So sometimes in the beginning, when I was younger and more foolish, I thought that Krishna consciousness was going to make me happy, because Prabhupada says that chant and be happy and so on. So I thought something was wrong, that I was still in anxiety. But here Srila Prabhupada is saying, you can't get rid of that anxiety as long as you're embodied. But you can change the quality, so that quality is going to take you to that place of happiness. 
So therefore I found I wasn't waiting all the time, nervously thinking, where's my happiness? I still don't feel happy. I was like, okay, let me get some service done, something done for Krishna. Now I'm going to read you one that uh, I found. Let me find it again. That I found very important where Srila Prabhupada is speaking. Here, Srila Prabhupada says, Bhayam means fear. Abhayam means fearlessness. If one is actually expecting that he should be protected, if you're expecting to be protected, then there should be no more of anything fearful. This is interesting. If I expect to be protected, I shouldn't be afraid. And we heard the example uh, when we were at the retreat of a child crossing the road. The child's holding on to the hand of their mother. They're expecting to be protected. They're not uh, some children who are very alert or the mother's attention is elsewhere. The child may be thinking, my mother's not paying attention. But generally speaking, the child is thinking, I'm going to be protected. If one is actually expecting that he should be protected, there should be no more fearfulness. If you simply divert your attention to the varieties of newspapers, in, in Srila Prabhupada's day we only had newspapers and television, now we have access on our very uh, close to us apparatus to draw our attention to every single thing that's going on in the complicated material world. If you simply divert your attention, divert your attention from the varieties of newspapers or any other information in this world, then what will happen to me? Prabhupada says, that, that, newspapers, that will not give you protection. Then, what do I have to do? Prophet says, you have to hear about Bhagavan, Hari, Ishwar. You have to talk about and hear about Sarvatma, the super soul, who is sitting in everybody's heart. Bhagavan, the personality of Godhead, who is full of all opulences. Bhagavan, this word, every word, every word suggests volumes of meaning. And Hari, Hari, he who can take away all your sufferings. And Ishwara, Ishwara. He is the controller, the supreme controller. So instead of diverting your attention to the varieties of news in this world, you just try. No, he says, this is Srila Prabhupada seated here with us. No, not try. You must. You must. What is that? What you must do? Always hear about him. Hearing and then preaching. After hearing, the next stage is spreading, pushing on the news of Krishna. First hearing, then spreading. And thinking, always. So, Srila Prabhupada puts the bar so high and he stands or sits scornfully looking out at modern society and of all of its materialistic allurements that cause everyone to be bewildered and ignorant as they increase their knowledge. They become more and more and more and more stupid and the person who really spoke about this with Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur because he was highly educated. He knew so many languages. He was a district magistrate. He was high in the British government. And at the end of his life, he writes in his bhajans, 
all my knowledge just turn me into an ass. So this is what we need to actually understand for ourselves and then apply it. And there's the hard part, because we're turned outward and the Srimad Bhagavatam is saying, turn inward. Turn inward, look inward. Solve some of these very frightening problems. And we would add, with, um, with sympathy for you all, it's not an overnight arrangement. It's not that you pick up the Bhagavatam and all your fears vanish like a, like a, a magic potion. It's, it's, an, it's a lifestyle change. It's a lifestyle change, a value change. And that a value change can only come from hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam and developing this sense that this is real. This is real, not that's real. That's a shadow world out there. I might have to live in it. I might have to work in it. I might have to raise my children in it. What can I do? And the answer, what can you do? Hear more of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Ingest it. Take it deeply into your consciousness. Because no matter how much I might have to live out there, I might have to do this, it doesn't change the fact that it's an illusory space. And it will increase your fearfulness more and more and more and more. The more that you take it seriously, the more that you listen to the news and feel, now I'm protecting myself by understanding the world situation, the more that you do that, the more you're entering into a deeper and deeper place of forgetfulness, of Krishna consciousness. Now I want to go back to the verse because there's something wonderful in this verse. This purport, Srila Prabhupada, in the beginning, especially in the beginning of the Srimad Bhagavatam, it, this uh, translation, as I said, this is an edited translation that Srila Prabhupada was a very eager to have. He wanted his words from Vrindavan where he was writing the Srimad Bhagavatam, he wanted them polished. He, in, he had one of his early disciples, was Hayagriva, who was a professor of English. And so Srila Prabhupada asked him, please edit everything, so that it was in good English, because he wanted it to be presentable to people of the world, and they wouldn't go, oh, this is very quaint. Uh, but for us, out of our love for Srila Prabhupada, when we read his quaint English, it touches our heart because it reminds us that there he was, 1960, early 1960s, he was compiling the Bhagavatam because a librarian told him that books had more substance than magazines. Before that, he was working untiringly on creating his Back to Godhead magazines. And then he started to translate the Bhagavatam. And when you see the Bhagavatam on a bookshelf, can you imagine you're like nearly 70 years old, you're living as a, a, a penniless mendicant, and you're, go, and, and you're going to translate all of that into English? And where's the money to do it? Where's the time? Where's the, the, the skills to do that? So Prabhupada was like you know, that um, bird we hear, that, whose eggs got taken by the ocean. And the bird said, I'm going to pick up the ocean until the ocean gives me back my eggs. Now just picture in your mind the size of a little bird and a bird's beak. <laughs> it has like a quarter of a teaspoon. And the, and the bird is pecking at the ocean. You go down here, you can see the bay. And a little bird pecking water. It's like meaningless. It's meaningless. What a stupid thing to do. How could you do anything? A little bird in the ocean. But the bird was so determined. And so then greater forces came, Garuda came to the aid of the bird. And when Garuda came, then suddenly, this was quite formidable. Because now there is this transcendental entity, a big bird, who's saying, if you don't do what this little bird wants, then uh, 
I'll take up the task. And then the ocean, the, the ocean and personified, uh, came and dis delivered the eggs to the bird because of the bird's determination. A, a, a almost meaningless determination. No bird can do that. And there is Srila Prabhupada sitting in the Vamsi Gopal temple at this time. He's cooking him for himself once a day and he's writing and he's translating the Srimad Bhagavatam. And then he goes to Delhi. There's one, one gentleman, Krishna Pandit, he says, he used to translate the Srimad Bhagavatam before dawn about 3 a.m. in the morning. What are we doing at 3 a.m. in the morning? I won't, ask, I won't ask you because you'll ask me. <laughs> and we, we might find out we're doing something similar. <laughs> he would do his daily work and then cook his food for himself. I arranged the raw materials for his cooking. And sometimes he used to come to my family asking my wife to get some food. And <clears throat> sometimes he, was also, he would also bathe in the afternoon. But every day he was typing. And he himself was reading the Bhagavatam. That's mysterious. Ah, that's a very good phone ring. <laughs> I want to get up and stand <laughs> and greet the deities. So he would do his daily work and then cook, but he was typing and he was reading the Bhagavatam and he was going down in the temple for darshan, sometimes returning between two and four in the afternoon and then he was typing, sending the proofs of back to Godhead to a place and checking the proofs. He did everything himself. He was doing by hand all this type of work. And his main activity was typing for hours and hours a day. So when we have this Bhagavatam with us, when we're here in a community that's centered around the Bhagavatam, actually, Srila Prabhupada was the one who inaugurated the hearing daily of the Bhagavatam. And in the beginning, he also wanted that you, all of you and, and me, would learn the verse every day. That was his expectation in the beginning. So how far do we have to push ourselves forward in order to be fearless? And how do we do it? Apart from hearing the Bhagavatam, which is so important, the other very important element that's re recommended in this purport is that Vasudev, or Krishna, has empowered his name with the powers of his personal self. Do we experience that? Do we experience that? If not, we have another cause for fearfulness. It's a good cause, you see. Fearfulness, spiritual fearfulness, rather than material fearfulness. How can I experience that? I sat there, Shuddha Prabhupada spoke, and I just felt full of fearfulness because I wasn't experiencing what he was saying. This is natural. Everyone should experience this. What is your problem? And I'd be sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, what is my problem? I'm not experiencing what he's saying. Everything is related to him, and everything has its identity in him. Stretch this for a moment. The next time you get frightened, the next time you hear the world news or the economic forecasts, stretch your mind to include this. Everything is within him. I'm within him. I'm supposed to be depending on him, not depending on the newspaper forecast. If I depend on the newspaper forecast, I instantly become frightened. And I instantly would draw all my energies to fight where there is fear. But I have to learn to release that habit, take my hand back from the world news 
and place my hand on the lotus feet of Srila Prabhupada and pick up the Bhagavatam. And I've got to force myself through the shallow waters of superficial reading, where I read and I don't hear anything, until I get to the point where I'm actually connecting that this is true and that's not true. That's relative truth and it's fragile. And this is substance. And if you can't do that, then Krishna, Prabhupada says, the name of Krishna is as powerful as Krishna himself. And anyone therefore can take advantage of the holy names of Sri Krishna, even in the midst of greatest dangers. And greatest danger we will all face. The greatest danger, what's the greatest danger? Death. There's nobody, young or old, who will not face that greatest danger. So are we not very intelligent if we're thinking ahead and saying, I have to become a mature devotee because I'm going to face this danger and I want to face it bravely, confidently, faithfully. And then the thing that I found was rather humorous, just to end on a lighter note, was Prabhupada is saying, the transcendental name of Krishna, even though uttered unconsciously or by force of circumstance, can help one obtain freedom from the hurdle of birth and death. And the reason I found that rather humorous was because every morning I utter the holy name of the Lord unconsciously <laughs> or by force of circumstance. You have to chant every day. I chant, we chant, but how many days are we conscious? So even when we're unconscious, even when we're just doing it because we're obliged to do it, it's still, it's going into our bank account. And it will help one. One time Srila Prabhupada was sitting here and somebody asked a question which I cannot remember. And Srila Prabhupada said to them, every time you say Krishna, 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 you are putting pennies in your bank. And one day, and if you have ever seen a video of Srila Prabhupada, you'll see when he raises, opens his eyes big and puts his head back. And he said, and one day, he said, you will have millions. <laughs> so there's your bottom line. Put some pennies in the bank. If you can't raise your standard overnight to depending on Krishna rather than depending on the so-called experts of the world who are all part and parcel of his control, but who do not have what he has, they do not have omniscience or perfect control or anything, they're just insignificant. Instead of raising them up in your mind to be significant, highly learned people, we should say, no, Prabhupada is the person who I'm going to have to take shelter of now, today, tomorrow, and at that most difficult moment. So train yourselves, train yourselves. Therein lies the gift that Srila Prabhupada is offering to us all. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai. Are there any questions? Just Quickly. Yes, Luke. Um, I hear about great personalities. Um, and, you know, they're obviously very humble. And they sometimes say things like, or, oh, you know, they say things that are really humble. Yes. And I think to myself, you know, I'm really trying to become Krishna conscious. And here is this great personality before me who's been really humble, saying that maybe they. They, um, you know, I can't really think of any examples, but I hope you, yes. you know what I mean. Yes. And then I look and I think, wow, you've devoted your entire life to doing that. I'm trying to do that. And sometimes it can feel a little bit like deflating sometimes when I hear. Well, here's an analogy for you. If you have a school, right, and you're going to school and you're in the first grade, um, there's all these people who are older than you in the school, right? But each one of them is going to a grade, a classroom the first grade classroom, second grade classroom, and so on and so forth. So each one of them is studying on a different level. Mm. 
So it can feel intimidating that, oh, I'm just a first grader. Um, I'm just a first grader, maybe I shouldn't be here because first grade is so low. But first, most of the students went through first grade unless they came enrolled in a higher level. And they found first grade, perhaps they found it challenging, perhaps they found it easy, but they did first grade work. Then they did second grade, third grade. So the sixth grader may be saying, wow, I'm really struggling. But they're struggling with this level, and you're struggling with this level. So if the first grader thinks, wow, all the sixth graders are struggling like I am, they didn't get anywhere, what's the use of doing all this hard struggle if I'm going to end up 20 years later saying I didn't get anywhere? But you understand that there'll always be a struggle on the level of attainment within a class as an analogy to help understand that. Okay. Very good, thank yeah. you. Okay. Yes? What does it mean to act on behalf of the Supreme Lord and who is the best example for that? To act on behalf of the Supreme Lord. Well, we, we would ha you, you sort of uh, set us up, so to speak, that uh, who's the best example of that? And we <laughs> have over here the best example of that. Uh, Srila Prabhupada is the best example of that. Because Srila Prabhupada, uh, in poverty, uh, in wartime, in complicated family matters, uh, in work life, um, in, in, in student life, and so on. He shows an example who he was wanting to serve Krishna in each of those situations. And each of those situations had their own um, complexities, you could say. So that's the key. We're, he's an example of that, and we're examples of those who are trying to follow his example to our limited degree because we have our own challenges individually. Each one of us has their unique challenges. Some people's challenges are so great that you think that they couldn't survive, but they do. And some people look like they make it easy, but that's their skill level. And Srila Prabhupada um, had both. He made it look easy. He talked about Krishna consciousness with full certainty. Full certainty. We repeat his words, but he spoke with, it, it was like obvious. If, if somebody, if your father walked in, and I said, that's not your father, would you believe me? If it was your father, I believe Krishna is my father, so... No, I'm, I'm talking in an ordinary sense. If your father walked in here and I said, you know, that's not your father, would you believe me? Because you know that's your father. You are authority, mm. so if you say, I believe you. Oh, you'd be very bewildered. <laughs> I mean, spiritually, yes. Yeah. But what I'm trying to, the point I'm trying to make is, find something in your life that you're certain about. Yeah. You're certain about that. Right? Like that. That's my father. If I say, that's not your father, you'll just say, no, that is my father. Yeah. I, not me being me, but somebody saying that to you, you will say, that's my father. Yes. Right? You don't have any doubt that's your father. You know him very well. Um, so that's how Prabhupada was with Krishna and Krishna consciousness. He knew it very well. He wasn't confused. Like you wouldn't be confused if we were talking about somebody who you knew very well. And, uh, and if your father was in charge of a very big company and he had made, you know, he had so many people working under him and he'd made so much profit and he was a big man, you know, you would be very proud of your father in that context. So Srila Prabhupada is telling us everything is under Krishna's control. This is the, the words that he's using. So you can imagine that he has a lot of pride about his father. Not pride about himself. I'm proud of my father. And that you'd see when Prabhupada would walk. His head was held high and his stick was there. He didn't look at the ground in front of him. You know, I walk down out of the temple room and all the time I'm looking on the ground. And that's why I find many leaves. Because I'm always looking at the ground. So I don't trip or fall or something happens. He just walked. It was, it was astonishing and people would try and imitate 
but you couldn't imitate that because you might trip. <laughs> but he had no fear. So we don't try to imitate Srila Prabhupada's state of mind, we can't. But he gives us guidance, he says, this will help you do this, do this, do this. So we try our best. And honestly, I'm sure that somewhere in Srila Prabhupada's uh, consciousness, he knew he was asking a lot of uh, these young people who were misguided, misdirected, and had used their lives in different uh, uh, unfortunate ways. He knew, but we can't dwell on that. We have to still do what we have to do. If we dwell on that, we won't get keep moving. So instead, it's up, come on, let's go. So inwardly, you might be lagging a little bit. <laughs> this is too hard. Um, he would be, keep going. You can do it. So that's the association we have to give each other that encouragement and that, um, that, that, that push that this is what's going to make your life work. It really, really will. It doesn't look like it from your angle of vision. It looks like I should, I should, whatever, whatever, whatever. <laughs> but this, make this the key element and then take care of the other things afterwards through the lens of Krishna because this is true. That's the amazing thing. Any other questions? Yes. Hi. Oh yes, uh, Venerable Elder. <laughs> yes. So, Hare Krishna Jagatani Mataji. Thank Hare you very Krishna. much for a wonderful class. Um, in the beginning of your lecture you said full surrender. Mm -hmm. So would you like to tell us a little bit more about full surrender? Full surrender. Full surrender. Well, you know, uh, if, if you see in the movies, right, or I used to see it in the movies, and there'd, there'd be some battle between two foes. They're fighting, 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 and then uh, one of them is about to win, and he has a gun, right, he points the gun at the other one, and he has to put his hands up in the air, because he, behind his back, he might have a gun, you know, and when, he, when the other one puts down his gun, he'll, he'll beat him. So he has to put his hands in the air and he has to stay like that. Just like the jail people, they have to put their hands through that hole and be uh, handcuffed so that they can't suddenly run away or beat up the, the, the water. Now that's not full surrender, that I have to put my hands through here and get them handcuffed and then that's not surrender. Surrender is when I've become convinced on the inside that what I'm hearing is true and I want to try and lead my life like this. I want to do that. I'm, I'm, I, I've got still so many things that I've got to work through. That I admit, I'm carrying a backpack full of all sorts of stuff, <laughs> but I want to surrender to Krishna. That's the beginning of full surrender. And then full surrender is to trust that Krishna will help me sort all this stuff out. He'll help me sort it out. And as he helps me to sort it out, my, my, my load will become lighter and lighter and lighter until I can sort of like walk free. Like you can imagine somebody who had been in prison for a long term, 30 years or something, how would you feel, I mean, in an ideal sense, when they said, good, good luck, we wish you well, here are our, our um, assistants who will help you with your life, and they opened the doors, and you could walk out into the free, into the sunshine. Now that analogy is not perfect because there are lots of people come out of prison and they struggle. But I, in an idealization, I've come out, I'm free now. That's what full surrender is like. So we're, we're, we're earning it. We're working towards that. Any other questions? Yes.
Um, Madhaji, you were talking about Srila Prabhupada quoting like keep, keep putting those pennies in your bank account yes. and like even if we unconsciously chant the holy name of Krishna, it's yeah. going to benefit us. Um, we also hear Maharaj Khatwanga's prayers where he says that, you know, at the time of death, my mouth will be full of mucus and like I'll be struggling. So I might not be able to take your name Krishna at that time, but you remember whatever I've done throughout my yes. life and yes. you please allow yes. me to come to you. Yes. But we don't see that happening in Ma Bharat Maharaj's example. Like full life, he it was a Krishna conscious life. Just before death, he got attached to the deer, and you know he was caring for the deer, and it almost like you know looks hopeless for conditioned souls like yes. us. That Krishna looked at what you did at the time of death. He didn't look at what you did throughout your life, and he actually gave you a body according to what you remembered at the time of death. So, how do we understand this? Well. If you go into each of these leelas very deeply, the best way to do that is to read what the previous acharyas have written about them. Because we can only see them from our limited perspective. And they explain lots of other things. And that helps us to understand what that particular story is meant to imbibe in the heart of the reader. So if we just say one side that Krishna will remember all the good things I've done in my life, if we only emphasize that as a teacher, not, not with the Bhagavatam, but as an ordinary teacher, a person may feel like, that's all right, you know, I'll do some good things here. I've done a lot of good things. I remember one time my son told me when he was a teenager that since the, I was born practically, I've been to so many Bhagavatam classes. So it's obvious that I'm going to be saved. And now let me go out and do something foolish. So to counterbalance that side, there has to be something on the other side. No, if you do something foolish, then look at this story. You see here what Jad Bharat went through. He was so, he was almost on the platform of Bhava Bhakti and he went right down to a deer. But when you go deeply into the Leela, you notice many things. He got the body of a deer, he got full remembrance in the body of a deer of the circumstances that got him there. So it was a little bit of an experience before he then became, came back with a full sense of renunciation of everything material. No this, no that, not a little bit of this and a little bit of that. So normally, if it, we're talking about a human being and they do something at the end of their life and they become a monkey, they'll have a monkey brain. He didn't have a deer brain. He had the same sense of purpose and identity through a short period of time where he was constrained by his outer body. But his subtle body didn't change. So some of our, <coughs> our acharyas point to Jad Bharat and other stories in the Bhagavatam and they point to great devotees who went through a certain experience as a method of teaching others and not that Krishna says, oh I'm sorry, off you go, you're a deer now. <laughs> but there's very much depth in each of these leelas in the Bhagavatam. So don't be foolish, don't think Oh, I can have a dog and a cat who I love and sleep with and at the end of my life they may not pop into my memory because oftentimes at the time of death what happens is you get like a kaleidoscopic experience of your life from, from childhood on, not just Hare Krishna and we go to heaven. <laughs> and, and in that kaleidoscopic experience of everything we may say, Oh, I want another one of those. Because when we go back to Godhead, if we're going back to Godhead, it's not like a visit and we come back. We're going there because we want to serve Krishna permanently. So as long as we don't want to serve him permanently, he will upgrade our situation here in this world. It will be upgraded, carefully upgraded, personally upgraded to encourage you to keep moving in that direction. 
But it's not like, it's a little bit childish, like ABC, to think, oh, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and then I go back to Godhead, what, is, what does that mean? Do you follow me? So, Krishna will, no doubt, take account of everything that a devotee has done. It's certified in various po points in scripture. But that doesn't give us the tendency to be kind of relaxed and say, oh, he, I, he, I went to Srimad Bhagavatam class when I was two years old, so I don't have to do anything. No, it's not that. But even in your son's situation, Krishna will definitely upgrade. That's yes. the hope yes. we have. Yes, and he'll hope that he grows up to be 16, 17, 18, 19, and more intelligent. But a teenager thinks like that. So Thank he's you. waiting for us to also grow up. Yeah. And he will certainly upgrade and uh, in a wonderful way. We're asked to be frightened of this material world because it's again important, otherwise you'll put your finger back into the fire. But at the same time, we're also encouraged not to seek liberation. I just want to go, I just don't want to take another birth. I just don't want to be here anymore. Because there's no service in that. There's no love in that. We should instead be thinking, I just want to develop my love for Krishna. Whatever it takes, I trust, I'm beginning to trust him after a long time. I'm beginning to trust him that he'll make the arrangement. He loves me. He's taking care of me. He brought me here. He'll take care of that. I just want to learn how to be a really good devotee. So let him work that out, not me. But let me work on my effort to become a good devotee. Good question. Thank, Thank you. you, Mataji. Thank you. All right. Any more? Oh, we've got one here, two there. Yes. Rasa, are you? Uh, do you have, <coughs> Mataji, do you have a, a brief take home point? What would you like us to take home? If I had a take home point from? From what you've said. From what I said, what hmm. would I like to take home? Well, what would you like us to take home? I'd like you to take home. I would like you to take home the fact that we have to divert our attention from the world around us, which is so challenging to do, and develop more and more faith in the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is also hard to do when our intelligence is plugged into the world. It's no little challenge to shift from there to here because they're going in different directions. So you might feel as if you're kind of going like this. But I'd like to see you go more like this and less like that. Hare Krishna Mataji. All right. um, Mari, in the class um, on the retreat, you spoke about there are different types of humility. There's the material humility and then humility from mercy that you get. Yes. I'm just trying to understand what's the difference in that and what are the correct rights? Well, humility, material humility, um, it means that I'm a much more humble person, right? I've done work on myself and I'm a humble person. But it may not mean that um, I'm, I, I'm understanding myself in, in context to truth and reality. Right, and, and spiritual humility means, oh, I'm understanding myself by Krishna's mercy in relationship to the truth. And it's not painful. Sometimes humility is earned painfully, you know, like you think you're very great and then you have a terrible failure and you feel like humbled. It's not, doesn't come like that. It comes by Krishna's love and kindness. He says, look, look at this. But he doesn't say, look at this, you fool. Or if he says, look at this, you fool, he says it compassionately rather than like harshly. That's one way of looking at it. One more? Hare Krishna Madhuri, thank Hare you for the nice class and uh, answers. Um, um, you mentioned this one point in the, in the class that this is an illusory place, and the more seriously that we take it, the more fearful it becomes. 
yes. because of forgetfulness of Krishna consciousness. Yes. Um, so um, the the fearfulness is is in, in in relation to how seriously we take this world, um, and we come across a lot of people and they don't take anything seriously, the materially or anything yes, material yes. or spiritual. Yes, yes. And so therefore mm. they claim themselves not to be so fearful. Yes, like yes. it's it's fine, we just take the yeah. days it comes, yeah. everything is good, not one day we that. die and yeah. it should be fine. Yes. So yes. how do we address such people? <laughs> it's not easy. I was thinking to ask you all, what are some ways that people deal with fear? But I was afraid you'd all say things like reading the Srimad Bhagavatam. <laughs> But one of the ways people deal with fear is they redefine it. Or they say, I love fear, I encounter fear, it gives me an adrenaline rush. So I love to jump off cliffs and fall from planes and do things that uh, other people think uh, are foolish. I like to do that, that just puts me, you know, I get control my fear, I have no fear. Or, or I love to take this kind of intoxication of some sort or another because it makes me positive and I, I then feel on top of the world and I, you know, I, I'm, I've got a vigor for life. And there's loads of things like that. Loads and loads and loads of them on the internet. Uh, psychologists say them, uh, people feel them and they believe them. But um, if you examine them with a very careful eye, you will see that there's still a lot of fear there. And the Bhagavatam itself is telling us that. So we've got the truth here that these are ways of dealing with fear. They're not actually fearless. What do you think, Luke? You're out there in the world doing everything foolish that you could possibly imagine. <laughs> Fearless. Yeah. yeah. I mean, in that case, when you came here, Bhagavad Gita, he was explaining my illusion. Yes. And I said to him, Oh, I know I'm aware of that, but I'm yes. just going to enjoy it and then I'll come to it. Yes. You'll enjoy your life and then I, later you'll work it out. Is that what you meet also when you go out and talk to people? That's a, I mean, that's, a, that's an elevated person. Most people aren't going to do anything after. They're just going to enjoy their life, and that's all. But it, I think it's very important, first of all, for us to recognize, as individuals who are speaking to people, that they are not happy. Uh, and you've got to cross beyond their facade. Ask them more questions. I've almost always, when talking to people who are like that, and they tell me that their life is wonderful and they're enjoying life and it's all amazing and on and on and on, and they've all imbibed these concepts from their psychologist or from the internet or somewhere like that, and if you just keep talking to them, they'll come to tell you of their own accord, unconsciously, of something horrible that's in their life, you know, that Oh, my father and mother got divorced when I was such and such an age and I got put into a, uh, an orphanage and this thing and that thing. They'll tell you things and they will might shrug it off that, oh, but that helped me, it was wonderful. <laughs> but when you listen to what they're saying, you won't find their lives are wonderful. They'll tell you of some anxiety. So rather than fear, why don't you look at Prabhupada's says fear is known as anxiety. They're usually happy to tell you about their anxieties rather than their fear. But they're the same. One last one. Thank you all for being so patient. <laughs> yes, Hare Krishna. I'm just reading the translation here. Uh, we, as we know, one of the prada is unattentive chanting. Unconscious yeah. chanting. And yeah. here they say even someone do unconscious chanting, yes. he can Yes, breathe. yes. But Prabhupada doesn't say unconscious chanting will give you perfection. He says it may help you. So he's recommending conscious chanting. But he's saying even unconscious chanting may help you. May help you. May help you. Meaning, not that it won't, he's not, he's not sort of giving a condition supply, but the problem with unconscious chanting is you're unconscious of the help it's giving you. You're chanting so fast 
you've got it done, you put your beads away, and you get on with the day, and you're not aware of what am I doing. So conscious chanting is when, wow, I'm so fortunate to be able to chant Krishna's name. And any of us here know the difference between a conscious chanting morning and an unconscious <laughs> chanting morning. <laughs> but the consolation is, even if you're chanting unconsciously, I'm hearing you, you might not be hearing me. Yeah? Hare Krishna. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Jai Shila Prabhupada. Class. Are you going to get lost yet? You're going to stay down. Oh, I mean, Thursday's class. Sorry.